In the shadow of your wings I will abide forever And hear my spirit sings I will rejoice in you, my God Welcome to In the Shadow of Your Wings with Pastor John Marins of the Granby Christian Church. The Granby Christian Church desires the lost to be saved and the believer to passionately pursue Christ in all that they do. Let's join Pastor John Marins for today's message. Well, good evening and welcome to the broadcast. It's so good to have Linda Starkweather with us in the studio. And you know, we're going to be talking about loving mothers and how mothers love us tonight in preparation to honor our mothers Sunday morning. The scripture says, if I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I become as a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. And if I give all that I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, isn't it? Yes, it is. And <clears throat> you definitely need patience when you're a mother. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, motherhood is one of the most probably difficult jobs you will ever in, uh, occur. But it's also one of the most rewarding. Yes, it is. And uh, so I think as we think of Mother's Day and the work that they put into it and how they're wanting to love their children and they're wanting to teach and to train them, uh, so how do we do it? You know, how do we achieve the goal that we want in our hearts? There isn't a mother out there that doesn't want the best for their children. That's right. Uh, they really do. And so how do we achieve it? And the way that I have found and that was what helped me the most was go to the Word. Amen. When we have a question, when we have, uh, what are we going to do? What do I do in this circumstance? You go to the Word. Yes. Uh, I love 2 Timothy 3.16 because it says all Scripture is God-breathed. Wow, that yes. means it's alive. It is It's alive. living. And it says that uh, it's God-breathed, but it is also useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And isn't that what we want for our children? We want to teach them. We want to yes, we do, and, and sometimes that involves correcting and rebuking mm. and uh so that's what i love about it and i've learned that uh with children uh educators will tell you that with children they learn by repetition mm -hmm. you know they want to read the same book over and over and they want to watch the same video over and over and i know i got so tired of bambi watching <laughs> bambi when the kids were little you could almost quote it but that's how they do learn but you know with parents and uh, as adults what do we hate we hate to have to repeat and repeat and repeat. Pick up your clothes. Uh, you know, don't go outside and run in the street. Don't do this. Don't do that. And when we have to tell them over and over, we get frustrated. Mm. And uh, I remember a time with my boys, and and uh, they were uh, young, and as two years apart and two boys you know they have uh, disagreements <laughs> so i'm busy trying to clean house and do my all the chores that i've got on the day and and here i heard jeff going ah! so i go in there and instead of listening like i should have i just i'd had it you know you come to that point and i said uh, you know they're trying to tell me what's going on i had that toy no i had it first and uh, all that and i said i don't want to hear it you just work it out, but I don't want to hear it anymore. You two just work it out. I don't want to hear this. So uh, a, a couple of days later, I'm doing laundry, and I'm walking back to the bedroom to put the laundry away, and I can see into wh the, where the boys are playing. And I see that Rick has a toy, and Jeff reaches over it and yanks it away from him. Rick r yanks it back, and then what does Jeff do? Ah! And gets Mother to come in and... And so, but I saw the whole thing. <laughs> so I walk in the room and I said, I saw exactly what happened. I said, Jeff, stop your crying. I saw exactly what happened. Rick had it first. And I, I understand now that you've been pulling this. You've been crying and getting your way. 
and I, now I see. And then I had to go to Rick, and I had to say, son, I'm sorry. Wow. I should have listened. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have been just hasty, just get it off my plate. I don't want to hear it. I should have listened to you, and I was wrong. And uh, I think that's one of the best things we can do as a parent is, hey, acknowledge it when you've done yes. wrong. It, we, we're not going to get it right all the time. It can't be right all the time but because we're not perfect. Mm -hmm. And uh, but be willing to say, I'm sorry. I love the phrase when you mess up, fess up. <laughs> I do. That That's a good one. And, you know, I haven't heard that one in that. Good. No. Yeah. Just acknowledge it. Say, you know, uh, I goof there. So then, of course, I love the uh, chapter you just read. Yes, first and I think third, especially yeah. where it says love is patient. Yes, love is kind. Don't we want to raise children that are kind? Mm -hmm. And how do we do that? How do we do that? Well, for the main way we can do that is to show kindness ourselves. Yes, let them see it demonstrated in us. And uh, I think you know we need to compliment them. Yes, if you see them doing right, you know. Tell them, hey, that's one thing I try to do at, at Chick fil A when I'm working and I see a child that does something, you know, opens a door for somebody or picks something up that somebody's dropped. And I always try to go over and say, I really saw that and that was so kind of you. Mm -hmm. And you know, it builds them up and then they want to try to do that again. So I like that. It's patient and love is kind. It does not envy. Wow. And you know, uh, we look around at other people and see what they have. I don't have the best car. I don't have the nicest house. I don't have all that money. I don't have all the things and the stuff. Uh, so we get to where we can envy. Mm. And uh, we know that's not good. So I had an example of that because when Jeff was in, um, well, they call it middle school now. They called it junior high back then. Uh, he came home one day and... Uh, he was down, and I could tell it. And he had a, I said, what's wrong? And he said, well, nothing's going right for me. Nothing. And he said, you know, Mom, I love Jesus, and I'm trying to follow Jesus. But nothing's going right for me. And he mentions another child, and he says, but over, I will say Joe. But Joe over here, he he doesn't try to follow Jesus, and he's not doing what, what's right. But everything's working out for him. And this is when you put up a prayer and say, Lord, please help me. Amen. Give me Amen. the wisdom to talk to this child. So as so happened, I had been in Psalms. I love Psalms. That's, that's so good. And so I took, I was able to take him to the 60, 73rd Psalm. And I said, you know, Jeff, you aren't the first person that's felt this way. That's right. I said, uh, not at all. So I said, let's see what, the, what it says. And it says uh, in 73rd Psalm, uh, they have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They're free from the burdens common to man. They're not plagued by human ills. And surely in vain, he says, have I kept my heart pure. In vain have I washed my hands in innocence. All day long I've been plagued and I've been punished every morning. And so that's how we feel. And you're thinking, well, nothing's going right for me. But then I said, Jeff, I want you to read this next verse. And so he read it and it says, till I entered the sanctuary of God, and then I understood their end. I said, it may look like they've got everything. But honey, when you accepted Christ as your savior, you started on a narrow road. Mm, yes. You're not on that wide road anymore. And what you've got to realize is that you've just got to follow Jesus, stay on the narrow road, and then you know where you're going to end up. And it's going to be good. It will be. And all of these things that God's bringing into your life, he's instructing you and he's teaching you. So we just have to thank him mm -hmm. and just realize where you are. You're on that narrow road. Narrow road. That's it? right. Yeah. So it really did help him. But, uh, you know, envy is not, it's such an ugly thing. It is. And then the, the next thing it's talking about here is it's uh, not to be proud. You know, uh, so 
my kids would come home and, and we'd talk about somebody being proud. And I said, let me ask you something. Do you enjoy being around proud people that's boasting all the time and telling how great they are? And how? No, we don't. So do you want to be that type of person? No. No. If you see it in others and you don't like it, then you need to realize that you're not going to like it. Uh, to, you don't want to be that way either. And then I, I think what we, a good thing that we can teach our children, John, is that everything that they have, every gift they have, everything they have comes from God. Amen. You know, and he has given all of us different gifts. And, you know, you may think your gift is not very good or very big. It's not, it's not to be singing out in front of everybody and have a beautiful voice. And, oh, how I've always wanted a beautiful <laughs> voice, but I didn't have it. And, uh, but, you know, what gift has he given you? Yes. And that's when we can pray with our children and say, God, help my child to learn what his gift is. Mm-hmm. And then if you can learn what your gift is and your love is, then it can grow and develop and it can become uh, the children that you want them to be. Mm -hmm. It's not, I like it's, it's not, it's not self-seeking and it's not easily angered. Uh, We live in a world right now, John, where there's anger everywhere. I mean, people get uh, fly off the handle and they lose their tempers and, I, I just think, oh my, we've got to teach our children to have that love and not the anger, you know, not to be angry, but to turn to the Lord and give him our our anger and our, our ups- when we're upset and help him to give us calmness. And you know how we can do that? Not yell at our children. I have seen it and you've seen it also, I know that parents that are yelling and screaming at their kids, it doesn't get you anywhere. It does not. Uh, I was, I have Sunday dinners and my grandson, my oldest grandson has a three-year-old son. And uh, his, he told his son, told uh, Dorian, he said, it's time to go home. Well, he didn't want to go home. So what does he do? No, I don't want to go home, no. And he starts crying and having a little fit. So, Jordan, I was so impressed because Jordan called him over, went and set him on his, got him on his lap, and he said, now, calm down. Now, take deep breaths. And he's going, <laughs> and he said, now, calm down. It's okay. But I know you're, in, I know you're having a good time. I know you've enjoyed it, but now it's time to go home. And he, he talked him through it, and I was I thought I didn't do that with my kids. I thought I was calm with him. But he actually, instead of screaming and yelling at him, he set him down. And I thought when he said, take deep breaths. And I thought, yeah, just get back to a calm place so you Mm -hmm. can listen to what I'm saying. You know, it's time to go home. But so we need to do that more. And we need to, you know, don't scream and yell. Kids don't learn from that way. Yeah. But they do learn when you're patient and your your speech is encouraging, it's uplifting, and it's not always tearing them down but building them up. Uh, another thing that we need to watch is that when we're talking to other people about our children, and they hear, believe oh, me, they're they within ever? earshot. Yes, you may not they think they hear. are. Then don't be running them down saying, oh, they're bad kids, they no. just they never mind. You need to be... Uh, reporting on what they do right (laughs) yeah do we want to hear what's bad about us all the time no you know god could sit and browbeat us all day long but what did he does he gives us the word he says i love you Mm -hmm. yeah you're gonna mess up but it's okay i'm here like the prodigal son i'm gonna be waiting here with my arms wide open when you turn and come back oh what a comfort that is it is a comfort Mm -hmm. linda I know an example that as a principal came into the school, uh, the store one day, and we got to talking about kids, and this is what we were saying, that the kids sometimes are so rude. And we couldn't understand. He said, I got a prime example of this. He said, Linda, I had a, teachers were coming to me with this one particular boy and said, we can't do anything with him. We can't. Uh, he's, he's rude. He he's, won't well, listen. So he said, I had to call the mother to come in. And I had to sit down. And as they're sitting across the uh, uh, desk from me, 
the the young man starts berating his mother and talking rude to her and being very disrespectful. And he said, I said to the kid, you should not talk to your mother like that. Because he said, I felt compelled, you know, to defend her. And you know what she did? She turned around and looked at me and he said, he's not your son, he's mine. And you don't speak to my son like that. Oh, my word. He said, I knew right then where the problem was. And he said, it's got to start at home. It does. This, this child has learned this behavior from this, from this mother. So I, I just want to say that love never fails. Love never fails. You know, as we draw our time to a close, Linda, I want to ask you to pray, especially for moms, and express what you've already expressed. That it is difficult, but God's mm-hmm. there to help. Yes. Would you pray for the moms? Yes. Uh, Father, we come to you right now, and I am holding these moms up before mm-hmm. you because I know, I know what their uh, task is, and they do. They know, uh, as a mom, we're not adequate. In of ourselves, we can't do this alone. But with your help and your guidance and your strength, you will demonstrate that to us, to how we can pass that on to our children. So we turn to your word. We turn to your living word. And we're saying, okay, we're going to study it. We're going to look into it. And we're going to help it to guide us. Lord, you love us deeply. And we, you have said in your scriptures that love covers a multitude of sins. So mothers, when you fail and you feel like you failed and maybe you don't do your best job that day because you're pulled in so many directions, but just remember, just love them. Just put your arms around them and say, I love you because it will cover all the mistakes that you've made because that's what God does with us when we make mistakes. He says, I love you. And that helps us get up and go on and move on. So, Lord, bless these mothers today. Give them encouragement. Uh, Help their children to express to them their love today. This is their special day. And I pray that they will receive the accolades from their children that they deserve. But most of all, Lord, we pray that they will be able to raise their children and that they will be God-fearing and loving children that love you and love others. We ask all of these things in your precious son's name. Amen. Well, thank you, Linda, so much for coming in, and happy Mother's Day to you as well. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you for listening to In the Shadow of Your Wings with Pastor John Marins of the Granby Christian Church. If you don't have a church home, they would like to invite you to join them this Sunday for morning worship at 1045. The church is located at 969 Granby Miners Road in Granby, Missouri. Have a blessed weekend and remember to abide in the shadow of his wings. I will rejoice in you, my God, in the shadow of your